Welcome to another Nintendo NX video on the channel. If you're new to the channel, make sure you're hitting that subscribe button for everything Nintendo NX. In this video, I'm mostly going to be talking about the PS4 Pro, but in the second half of this video, I'm going to talk about what impact it could have on the NX. So it's a it's an NX video, but I'm not going to be spending most of the video talking about the nx that's going to be for the second half of the video but for the first half i just want to give you my thoughts on the ps4 pro now i have made um a list of notes w which i want to talk about in this video um so i definitely want to get through all of that but i don't really want to look at my notes otherwise i'll just go through all of my points too quickly that's something which i've noticed that i do quite a lot when i do make a list of my ideas I end up just going through them too quickly and not really expanding on my thoughts so pretty much I'm just going from the top of my head and then at the end um, what I will do is just go back and look at my notes and see what I might have missed um, so if this video does go on for quite a while then it will be split up into two parts but the two parts will be uploaded on the same day if I can do that what I might do is might upload part one today part two tomorrow I'm, I'm not sure at this moment in time but yeah, let's just get on to my thoughts on the PS4 Pro. Anybody that has been tuning into my channel for quite a while now knows that I'm not a big fan of console updates. I'm not a fan of the PS4 Pro. I'm not a fan of um, Project Scorpio from Microsoft. I made a video around about E3 talking about, or the title of that video was PS4 Neo and Project Scorpio Needs to Die. And I got a lot of negativity in that video, but yeah, I'm just not a fan of console upgrades in general. But did that PlayStation meeting make me feel any different? No, it didn't. One thing I must say is that I think the pricing for the PS4 Pro is bang on. I think they got it spot on. I think they got it at the right price if you've got a 4K TV. But I know quite a lot of people out there that don't have 4K TVs and in my personal situation as well, I've just bought a TV a couple of months ago, I'm not going to go out and pick up another TV just so that I can make my games look prettier, I'm not, not going to do that at all. It's like I said on Twitter, can you imagine buying a 4K TV, a PS4 Pro and PSVR, that is just a hell of a lot of money, so I definitely think on its own, if you've already got a 4K TV or a TV that does take advantage of HDR, then I think 350 is sort of reasonable. But like I said, I'm just not a fan of these console upgrades in general. I think it's just, I don't know, I think why not just wait until PS5? Because apparently, you can't play games in native 4K. That's what I've been hearing. Apparently, it is upscaled 4K. There are a lot of concerns knocking about that, you know, whether the PS4 Pro will play games in 1080p 60fps. Now, I'm, I do know that Rise of the Tomb Raider will be targeting 1080p 60fps, but and there is that concern there amongst the community. And, yeah, I just feel like the 1080p 60fps part should have been what the original PS4 was supposed to... Well, I, I think that's what the regular PS4 should have been. It should have been 1080p... 60 fps none of this 1080p 30 fps malarkey it should have been 1080p 60 fps but now that this ps4 pro is coming out it just makes me feel like an inferior flipping gamer because i've got the regular ps4 i only bought my ps4 last year i bought the one tb model um only last year last july and now i feel like i've got an inferior product um it just I don't know, I'm not a fan of it at all, I'm really not a fan of console upgrades, let PCs be PCs, let PCs do the upgrades and let consoles be consoles where it's just ease of use, where you know your games are going to be running on that system and you can go out and pick up a game for it and you know that it's going to run properly on your system. Now, my concern with the PS4 Pro is that it will shaft flipping regular PS4 owners those regular PS4 owners will get shafted in a couple of years that is just my fears now 
there's nothing there's nothing saying that they you know they might not no, pretty much they say, I can't even flipping get my words out, but at the moment they're saying that there's not going to be any exclusive PS4 Pro games, but who's to say that can't change in a couple of years' time? And what my fear is, is that in a couple of years' time, developers might target the PS4 Pro when they develop their games. So, so they might develop their games basically to run on the PS4 Pro. And my fear is, for regular PS4 owners, those games will run like absolute rubbish on the regular PS4. That's just my fear. I fear that we will be getting poorly optimised games because developers are stretched way too thin and they're going to be targeting the console that will be more powerful, which is the PS4 Pro. And as a result of that, it, it might mean that we will get poorly optimised games for the PS4, the regular PS4. And that might mean we will get games running at a poor frame rate and just going on into like next year's E3 and whenever they do another PlayStation meeting I think they do like a Paris I think they did a Paris conference in December last year that going into future events we're gonna have to question what is this game running on is it running on the PS4 Pro or is it running on the PS4 I really hope Sony communicate that really really well when they do show off ps4 games at e3 or when they, whenever they show off their games again my fear is is that they won't do that they will just hide and won't even bother talking about that sort of stuff and the game will look pretty like the game will look good and it will run good but it's running on the ps4 pro and you've got regular ps4 owners like myself they might be watching that and they might be thinking great that is what I'm going to be getting on my PS4, but no you're not, because that's running on the PS4 Pro. And your version is not going to be looking like that at all. Um, so, yeah, I just for me it just feels like now I've got an inferior product and I'm not going to be upgrading to get the flipping PS4 Pro. I'm not going to be doing that at all. I think it is a worthless product. I think consoles should just stick to generations. And... I feel like, like I said earlier, if it can't even do native 4K, then what is the point? What is the point of it? Um, so, that is just my thoughts at the moment about the PS4 Pro. Um, yeah, I just, I just don't see the point of it. Um, my fear is, is that regular PS4 owners will get shafted. Now, there is this update for um, the regular PS4, which can take advantage of the HDR stuff, um, but. Yeah, I think that is a good way to, you know, make regular PS4 owners not feel inferior. But you're still going to have games not running at 1080p 60fps, which of course the PS4 can't do. But because you've got this model out there that supposedly can run games at 1080p 60fps, that can do games in upscaled 4K and all of this HDR sort of stuff, it does make the current PS4 that I've got right now feel inferior and I just feel like that is just completely stupid. And the only way I should be feeling that is in a new console generation so when I don't know when I was going from PS2 to Wii I was just you know in the period where I just didn't really want to play a PS2 games so I'm just looking forward to playing on the Wii and I guess the same could be said for Wii into Wii U um, so I, I don't I just feel the same way now about the PS4, the regular PS4 and the um, PS4 Pro. So that is going to be the end of part one of this video. I have to split this video up into two parts because for some stupid reason, whenever I do upload videos longer than like 12, 15 minutes, the video glitches out so not many people can see it. So that is why I'm splitting this video up into two smaller parts. I'm not sure how much NX talk will be in the first part, but I'm still going to title it NX versus PS4 Pro um, Part 1. Um, I'll try and make sure there is a little bit of NX talk, but in Part 2, you're definitely going to hear me talk about the impact this could have on the NX. One thing I want to say about the PlayStation meeting, which I will mention in Part 2, um, is watching that definitely got me more excited for the NX I'm definitely I'm looking forward to seeing what Nintendo will be doing different because we already know that the NX will be unique they've mentioned it so many times we've had it but we had it from 
Red Joe, we've had it from Tatsumi Kimishima, Shigeru Miyamoto, Scott Moffat before he left Nintendo. So we know that it is going to be unique. But as I'm going to mention in part two, there is the opportunity there for Nintendo to take advantage um, of the NX. I'm going to talk about that in the second part. But for this video, let me know your thoughts about this in the comment section below. Let me know whether you will be picking up the NX or whether you will be spending your money on a PS4 Pro. Definitely looking forward to hearing your thoughts about this. And apologies, I have to split this video up into two parts. It's just how it is, unfortunately. But yeah, for this video, that is it for this one. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye.